and as everything when we direct our love towards God it is fabulous fabulous and I have to say Ryan that was beautiful and uh, I can't even take credit for writing that song because it came straight from the words came from the big Bhagavad Gita I just rearranged the words so Krishna wrote the words <laughs> Krishna did it okay so the title today is um, we are star stuff are we star stuff yeah. well when you look at a star in the sky it looks like a stars there's many stars right but is it really a star our Sun is a star but it looks like the Sun those stars are really suns and they look like stars that's kind of an analogy for how we look at ourselves right we walk around and look at ourselves in the mirror and I think oh this is Lisa and this is Lynn and this is Buzz these are appearances what we really are is the divine the divine with the divine expressing from within us and this appearance just like the star appears to be a star but it's really a Sun this appearance is just a costume that's just making us look different from each other but we're all the same okay so we may we may know this right do we believe it do we get it think of it this way we think of um, Hollywood stars as being different from us right because they make more money they're more beautiful they're walking the red carpet oh everybody knows who they are nobody knows who I am so they're a star and I'm not a star but you're a star too they're wearing the same meat suit that you're wearing we're all the body is just made up of the elements air space fire water earth and that's in different proportions for all of us and it looks different because it's, it's material things but what makes us alive it's that spark within it's that spirit that Brahman that's imperishable that doesn't die it appears that we die but we don't die it appears that I'm separate from Lynn but we're not remember in spirit there's no time or space it looks like all those stars are separate in the sky it looks like the Sun is separate from us but it's not in spirit there's no time or space it looks to us through our human eyes that that is what's happening but that's not what's happening we tend to label a lot of things you know like our name is a label for us but who was it that said a rose by any other name smells just as sweet I can't even count how many times I've changed my name <laughs> I was born with my maiden name and then I got married the first time and changed my name I had nicknames when I was in school and then I got married the second time and changed my name and then I went to a numerologist and changed from Lisa Marie to Lisa with two S's but I'm the same right I've been coming here with I don't know how many names over the years but you all recognize oh yeah that girl she's Lisa okay here's an example as I was I didn't even think of this till this morning but I just had to tell you guys so I'm making my oatmeal this morning and I'm going this is the perfect example of how God or Brahman plays games with us to kind of test us do you know who you are do you know what is real what is not real I'm making my oatmeal it reminded me the last time I, I I've been going to the grocery store I go to Vaughn's and you go in the cereal section there's so many cereals right there's so many choices you go I go to get oatmeal there's so many choices of oatmeal you go could get Quaker oats there's so many choices of Quaker oats right and I notice oh they have gluten-free Quaker oats and it's got a new label it's a purple label and it says gluten-free I'm like oh I wonder if they did something different to it 
Okay, I'm just gonna get this gluten-free oatmeal because it's good to be gluten-free. Yeah, it's $1.50 more, but maybe they did something special to it. I'm just gonna try it. You know what? It's the same oatmeal. It's the same oatmeal. Oatmeal is gluten-free. <laughs> it just is. Can you imagine sitting in the corporate office of Quaker Oats going, you know what? Gluten-free is a real trend right now. We gotta get in on this trend. How can we do this? Yeah, but oatmeal's already gluten-free. One exec says, okay, let's just put a label on it that says oatmeal is naturally gluten-free. Oh, no, 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 no. How can we make money off of that? Let's make a special label that says gluten-free and maybe they'll fall for it. We'll, they'll buy our gluten-free version. But when you read the back, it says, you know, this is our same Quaker oats that you've come to know and love just with a different label so you can tell it's gluten-free. But the other one says 100% rolled oats, 100% rolled oats. So I have a label on me that says Lisa and Lynn's got a label on her that says Lynn. But you know what? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. What's on the inside? That's what counts. What's on the inside, not what's on the label. Okay, so we all know this. I mean, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir every time I come here because you guys are so elevated. You've been coming here all this time. You know all this stuff. It's like you're hearing it again and again and again. You know it. But are you it? Are you being it? Lynn was talking about how do you demonstrate this knowledge out in the real world? There always seems to be a gap between knowing and being. But the truth is, knowing is being. Once you know it, how can you not know it? You can't, I mean, maybe we forget, but we know it. We gotta remind ourselves all the time. There's a, there's a story in the Mahabharata about Duryodhana that illustrates that just knowing is not enough. We have to be it. We have to be it. If, if knowing was enough, wouldn't we all be enlightened right now? But we're not. Duryodhana is the bad guy in the Mahabharata, but he's smart. And Krishna says to him one day, don't you know who you are? I mean, how can you do all this bad stuff all the time? Don't you know the difference between right and wrong? Somebody's got to teach you the difference between right and wrong. And he goes, huh, I know the difference between right and wrong. But I can't help it. I choose the wrong every time. I can't help it. Sounds like some politicians. <laughs> we know, right? Oh, my gosh. But... We we want to bridge that gap between knowing and being. We know and we choose to do good out in the world, but then we forget and and we get angry or we get disappointed or we get sad or we feel less than or we feel not enough. You know, we forget. But... Um, Once we know there's nothing we have to do to not know. So for example, there's this old Vedanta story about the tiger and the sheep. So this uh, tiger was attacking a herd of sheep. And in the middle of her attack, she like fell down and gave birth to a cub and died. So here's this baby cub out in the middle of all this sheep, doesn't know what to do, brand new born baby cub. So the baby cub just joins the sheep family. And all this time, it's following the sheep and eating grass and acting just like a sheep and bah, bah, bah. And it's perfectly content thinking it's a sheep surrounded by all these other sheep, that's his family. And then one day a tiger comes to attack the herd. 
and it's stalking and stalking. And it says, what? What's this tiger doing amongst the sheep? And he can't believe it. And he's observing the tiger and going, that tiger thinks it's a sheep. How the heck did this happen? So it goes over and takes the little tiger by the scruff of its neck and steals him away and has a good talking to to this tiger. He says, Tiger, what are you doing? You're not a sheep. And he's like, buh, buh, buh. What are you talking about? I'm a sheep. This is all I know. Who are you? And he goes, who am I? I'm a tiger. You're a tiger, just like me. And he, to convince him, he takes him over to the lake and has him look into the lake. He says, see your reflection? See my face? See my reflection? You're a tiger, just like me. Now roar. And he goes, roar, roar, roar. No, like this, roar. And the little tiger goes, roar. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm a tiger. This is, this is us. Now what does he have to do to be a tiger? He doesn't have to do anything. Now he knows he's a tiger. He can act like a tiger. He can behave like a tiger. He knows he's a tiger. He is a, he is a tiger. He's not a sheep anymore. There's another story about uh, a little a little prince who went on a hunt with his uh, with the royals. All the royals they go sporting every weekend, and the little prince got lost in the forest. They searched everywhere. They couldn't find the little prince. They don't know what happened to him. And then one day, uh, one of the hunters was out there, and he met a farmer in a little hut, and he saw this little boy with him, and he's like. That's the prince. And he's like, I'm not the prince. I'm this farmer's son, and we just farm. He's like, no, you're the prince. Once he knew he was the prince, he took him to the castle and said, this is the prince. And they're like, my long lost son, you're the prince. We all have this illusion of who we are. And, you know, maybe other people do too around us because that's what we portray. Did the sheep think that that tiger was a tiger? No, they weren't scared of him. He was acting just like them. Why not? So once we know, we know. It's like in a, you know how they have MOG, what do they call those things? LOL, blah, blah, blah. There's a new one, I-Y-K-Y-K. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. That should be enough for us. That should be enough for us, but it's not. So how do we know when we're making spiritual progress? We know when we start behaving like it, when we start acting like who we are naturally. And in the Bhagavad Gita chapter 16, there's a whole chapter that says all the qualities of the divine versus the qualities of the demonic. So qualities of the divine, fearlessness, a pure heart, self-control, charity, study of the scriptures, authentic, integrity, gentle, truthful, devoted, peaceful, freed from anger, humility, compassion, distaste for gossip or slander. That's when I struggle with <laughs> and gossip's like, you know, how often do we do that? We need to practice. That's how we get there. We need to practice. We need to, how they, what they say, fake it till you make it. So practice these qualities and Krishna says, practice these qualities and divine treasures you'll find. You'll understand that that's who you are. So fake it till you make it. Keep acting as if you are divine. Because you are divine. And don't forget that. Lynn brought up also another word that's really big in the Center for Spiritual Living circles. Manifestation. What is manifestation? Manifestation is awareness plus action. Look at how those two words are. Same thing as knowing and being. Knowing is being. So all we have to do is be. Be our true self. And how do we do this? We practice. Practice, practice, practice. There's another Vedanta story about how, um, say you're riding an elephant. 
the rider of the elephant is the intellect. And the intellect knows where it wants to go. So it guides the elephant where it wants it to go. Well, the elephant represents our mind and body and emotions, mind, body, emotions, those kind of things. Okay, the intellect knows best where to go. But what if the elephant doesn't want to go? The elephant could go wherever it wants. The elephant's a lot bigger than the little rider on the top. The elephant can say, no, I want to go this way and just go this way. So what makes the elephant go the way the rider, the intellect, is telling him how to go? Training. Practice. Over and over and over again. And what that means is being a good person, reading the scriptures, coming to church, meditating, praying, all that stuff that you're already doing. <laughs> Just keep doing it because that's who you are. Okay. Got it? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm done.